here we are in the eFlip software, and I'll run you through how I like to set it up. Keep in mind that I set it up differently every single time, so I get different looks of you know each different potential book out there. So I'm not always sorting it through the same exact parameters because then I would see, generally speaking, a lot of the same books and same similar types of books, okay? So I like to kind of mix and match. I'll kind of explain my thought process as we go through this. But if you want other different ideas on why I set it up differently and different ways that you can do it, there is an entire playlist on this channel. I'll be sure to drop that in the description at the bottom below there I think there's like four or five tutorials already so this might be like the fifth or sixth so there's plenty of content on how to learn eFlip you can learn it in like 15 minutes through this tutorial if you want to master it watch them all so here we are on the eFlip software and what I, the first thing I like to do I'm gonna go le right to left over here and then we're gonna click search and it's gonna spit us out results down here now I love this because there's a great opportunity with eFlip to really find good book outliers that are opportunities for you to buy from one marketplace and ship into Amazon FBA now, there's two ways to basically make money here on eFlip, and I'm going to run you through examples of both of those. So the first, all you really need to know is you buy a used book on Amazon, uh, or sorry, not a used book, you buy an, a merchant fulfilled book on Amazon, and then you usually ship it into FBA because you're going to get the buy box at a higher price point, okay? For this specifically, you're going to also be looking for books on other websites, and eFlip, one of the great things about eFlip is if you click the book finder, and I'll show you how to do that here in a second, it's going to give you other potential opportunities of where that book can be online and the price point so you know if it's a profitable book or not. So the first thing I do on the right here is I'm going to set the max publish date to like 2008. Sometimes I go a little higher, sometimes I go a little bit lower, but really all you want is current books because if you're not getting a current book, then obviously it's not in circulation not anymore, and there's not that much demand for it now these aren't all textbooks but a good majority of them are okay so just keep that in mind now the next thing I'm gonna do is the max average rank and the max rank so I'm gonna drop this all the way down to 100 and what I'll usually do this isn't so specific like if I wanted to make it more specific I'd go like up further um, and then I'd also go let's go to 2010 uh, and I'd also go like down further if I wanted to make this more specific and I'd kind of make this more specific as I go and then if there weren't enough uh, you know, books right here, that book leads, so to speak, or maybe I checked into all of them, then what I would do is I'd slowly broaden it out, right? Maybe I'd go to like 120 or like, you know, 2008 or 2006, right? Or et cetera, et cetera, with all the parameters. So go very specific first and then broaden out. You're going to find better books. It's going to save you a lot of time. And then you can always go a little bit broader, okay? So I don't really ever change the max new used offer. Sometimes I do, but rarely. Max trade in value, you just want something here. So whether you want to go like 50 cents, a buck, two bucks obviously the higher you go here the more specific you're going to be right so that same thing here with the max publish date right you want relevant books because if there's a trade in value for the book then obviously someone somewhere is still using that potential book and there's a trade in value right this obviously has to do with textbooks so if you're getting textbooks you want to keep this with something here in the value on minimum because you don't want something that has zero dollar trade in value because then clearly it's probably out of circulation and no courses are using it anymore so no students will have a demand for it okay now, max Amazon price, max use price, all these right here. Basically, what you want to do is you want to set these parameters so that you can find good books. Now, these are what matter most. Obviously, these you can kind of play around with. Um, and, you know, max rank obviously matters as well. They all matter. But this right here, these three levers are really going to want are going to be what decide what books you get for the most part. Okay. So let's go to the minimum Amazon price is like 40. We'll go minimum use price, like maybe 25 cents. And maybe we'll drop this down to like, uh, you know 30 and we'll just see what pops up now we can always go a little bit more specific we can always go a little bit more broad but we're just gonna see what pops up so it doesn't look like any uh, anything's coming up right here so let's drop this down a little bit let's drop this higher and we'll go to like 30 and also drop this to one now I'd play around with this and stay a little bit more specific but just for the you know for the sake of showing you different potential books I want to kind of you know just get some results to show you how I'd source them so finally, it popped up with a bunch of different books. Now, I'm going to start sourcing these just to kind of show you how I would approach different potential books and how I'd find good outliers. Although keep in mind that because it's shot out, once I change that to like, I, I dropped it, I put this up to 40, I dropped this to one cent, I dropped these to 30 and 30, and I dropped this to a dollar just to kind of show you how it'd spit out book leads and what they might look like. If you scroll all the way down, you can obviously manipulate this uh, for certain rows, right? Um, and there seems to be a lot of results, right? Because there's a 
lot of potential books and there's over 14 pages of results right here. So you probably want to go a little bit more specific with your results, but for the sake of saving you time and giving you value without wasting your time, I'm just going to start sourcing through this list right now and not waste any more of your time. So we'll try to find a good one through this list. So right here, what I usually do, and this isn't, I, I, people, I always get people like saying like this, you know, I found, I usually find them, you know, where they're not a big discrepancy and so on and so forth. And you're going to get what I mean here in a second. But this is just an indicator, okay? This is a potential indicator to tell you what's a good find, right? So a potential indicator, not always, not a sure thing, a potential indicator is a difference, a discrepancy in new and used price. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean anything, depending on how you're sourcing, but it's just an indicator of a potential good buy. So if you are you only have a little bit of time, the reason I'm telling you that is if you only have a little bit of time, you don't have enough time to source through all these books to potentially check you want to go through and look for the biggest discrepancy in new and used price and just check them to save you time. Then you can always come back and check the other ones. And once you click them, so you see like once you click one, it'll go gray. Like this one's gray. I've already checked this. This one's green. I haven't checked this. This one's gray. I've already clicked this and checked this, right? And it might be difficult for you to see like the discrepancy, but like on my screen as I'm screen recording, I'm sure you can. But if you can't, you definitely can tell the difference on your screen. Look, green, 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 gray, green, green. I think that's green, gray, right? So avoid the gray ones. I've already checked into those myself. So this one right off the bat looks like a decent uh, opportunity. It has a, d a discrepancy of 60. The used price is, is uh, 12 bucks. So I'm going to click open tab on the link. And I'm also going to click this down and click book finder, okay? And what that's going to do is it's going to give me the potential opportunity of what this is selling for both used and new. So used will be on the right, new will be on the left on other websites that are Amazon, but other websites that aren't Amazon as well, right? You see like it starts spitting you out used books and new books and their price points, right? So I'm going to go back to this that I just want you to understand what it is and why I opened it up right now, okay? So once you click the link, it's going to take you to all the used offers. And what I want you to do is I want you to right click on the picture of the actual listing or the book, obviously. So that's going to take you to the product detail page. So now you want to look at the buy boxes, right? And with you with books, there's usually two buy boxes. There's the used buy box and a new buy box, not all the time, but most of the time. Okay. So I want you to look for discrepancies in what you can source it for new versus used. So is there a used discrepancy? Let's go back. The buy box price is $23.94 and the cheap cheapest used price right here is $12.44, used goods. So that could be a good opportunity to buy this and resell it, right? And also because I, I started to figure out why AMZ, Plus, AMZ Scout Calculator I don't think works on a lot of the book listings, and I think it's because there's two buy boxes on books. It used to frustrate me, and I was like, why the hell isn't this working on the book listings? But I'm pretty sure it's because there's two buy boxes and it doesn't know which one to check. So with that no big deal on books. We're just going to pull up the AMZ Scout Calculator or sorry, the uh, FBA calculator that comes with Amazon. So we'll pull that up. And then we just need to go down to the ACE, to the ISBN, not the ASIN. We're going to take the ISBN right here, and we're going to paste it in to the FBA calculator because we want to put our calculations in there to see if this is a profitable book, okay? So the item price we're checking used, remember, is $23.94. So $23.94. Ship to Amazon fee? Well, usually that'd be a buck if you ship it into FBA, but guess what? If you're fulfilling it merchant, and this is why I wanted to show you this, that's why it's also a great opportunity to do your fulfillment as well, is if you ship it as, you know, you're not shipping into FBA, you're just doing your fulfillment, you could offer free shipping or you could also charge for free shipping. Or, or you, could, you could charge for free shipping. You could also charge for shipping. Although keep in mind that if you're charging for shipping, that's going to raise your price and then you won't have the buy box. So just as a rule of thumb, I always recommend just keeping the shipping zero, right? You're either going to offer free shipping and therefore the, the they're not going to pay anything for the shipping or, or you're going to offer, you know, shipping, but then you're going to drop your price down to like 16 or 15 or 17 to match the buy box. So you get the price, right? So always put zero in here. Once you find the item price on your fulfillment, same thing with obviously with Amazon fulfillment. So uh, if I wanted to ship this into FBA, just get an idea. I'm going to put a buck in there. We have zero in shipping right here. The cost of our product is 1244 plus 75 cents tax. So we'll just round it up and we'll say 1344, even though that's a little bit much. I usually like to be a little conservative. So then we'll calculate and see if this is a profitable buy to buy used. Now it's not profitable. Look at this. It's not profitable if we ship it into FBA because the, the uh, FBA fees are a lot higher, right? So we have the selling fee right here is 539. The fulfillment by Amazon fee is 742. So it's not profitable to buy it used and ship it into FBA. But if we buy it, 
uh, you know, for thirteen forty four, and we fulfill it ourselves for twenty three ninety four. Obviously, you're going to be making five eleven. So keep in mind, it looks profitable here, but this is where you need to ask yourself: you're netting five eleven, okay? If you list it at this price, but you haven't accounted for shipping yet, right? Because we didn't put anything in the shipping field, because you want to make sure that you match the buy box price, and that's the price that you're going to get it at, right? So you have to then ask yourself: okay, you can make five eleven on this if you fill it by merchant. What is it going to cost you to ship this out for F for media mail? Well, you need to find the weight of it and then put it into a media mail calculator. But typically speaking, it's going to cost you anywhere from like 250 to 380 max, depending on the weight of the book. So this obviously is a profitable book. You can buy it for 1344, maybe make 250 on it. Although while it is profitable, not something I'd really go after because the ROI isn't phenomenal. Um, but you could, you could, okay. So then obviously it's not necessarily the best opportunity, although it is profitable FBM, not profitable for FBA used. Okay, so we want to find out is it a good opportunity to buy it new? So the used or the new buy box, excuse me, is 59 bucks. So can we source it anywhere else for as a new book, right? So you want the left side right here, not used. You want to find can you source it anywhere else? And it does also look like they're selling a used book on Prentice right here for 906. If you wanted to check into that, that obviously might give you another a little bit of margin right there. Because if you put it like 906 and assume that there was free shipping, then you might be a little bit more profitable at 949. And then boom, if you ship it out media mail for like 250, then you just netted like seven bucks. So not a bad one if you're going to buy this one, but I'd look into that a little bit more. Okay. So. Let's try to find the new one, right? So the new buy box is 59 bucks, right? You can source it for 22, uh, 24 on eBay. So we need to find out A, if that's profitable, and B, is it the same exact book, okay? One of the things that you need to worry about right here when you're sourcing new books from other websites that aren't Amazon is make sure that it's the same book. Sometimes you'll see international editions and sometimes you'll see instructor editions. The international or the instructor are two different editions than the product detail page. Do not buy instructor editions and sell them back on Amazon under this product detail page. Do not buy international editions and sell them on Amazon under this product detail page. They are different books, okay? Different, different variations, not the same, don't do it. So you need to find out, A, is this profitable to source it from here, and B, is it in an international edition or a, an instructor edition, and if it's not, then we can obviously potentially buy it, right? And assuming that it's profitable. So on eBay right here, we need to see, is this an international edition? Um, and they have actual pictures of this, so that's a good one, although that's a terrible picture. It doesn't look like it's an instructor edition off the first glance. Um... I'd obviously, if I was about to buy this, I'd probably spend a minute and like read through this to make sure that there wasn't any instructor edition. It does say student edition right there. So student edition on the bottom right, right there. So it is student edition right here. It looks like they're selling it for 14 uh, bucks. But if you add it to the cart, then obviously you're paying 545 shipping. So that's 1945 that you're going to be paying for this. So then let's come back and we'll go 59 bucks. I said 1945 is the cost of our product. So we put 1945 in there. And we go 59 bucks right here. We assume it's going to cost us a buck to ship it into Amazon. Let's calculate whether it's profitable if we fulfill it ourselves and if it's profitable to ship it into FBA eventually as well. So boom, that's a profitable book right there. You buy it right here on eBay for 14 bucks, right? It is the student edition. You can literally see that right there. It says student edition. Um, and then obviously, usually if you don't have the book right there as well, you also kind of want to go through and see this doesn't look new though. That doesn't look like a new book. I'm obviously showing you, so I'm not like going through the normal checklist in my mind. This actually is not a good buy because this person has this brand new. That's not a book. That's not a brand new book. So you know, maybe I'd make a lowball offer on them to see if I can I can fulfill it. Uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Fulfill it as a used book. So maybe I'd make them like an offer of like six bucks on this with with free shipping or something like that, or even lower, and be like, hey, that's not a new book. And maybe they accept it. Maybe they don't. But that's obviously a sketchy seller. I wouldn't do that. They have a good rating, which is weird. But that's clearly not a new book. Okay. So avoid that. Obviously, you want to check into that. But one of the things that people always ask me too is like, can you get IP claims? Can you get in trouble for selling a used book on Amazon um, and as a new book, right? And the answer is twofold. Yes, you can and no, you can't. So if you buy a used book, so if this said used right here, you bought a used book, you sourced it and you knew it was used when you sourced it, right? And you listed it on Amazon as new and you had no proof that you bought a new book of that version and, and before you listed it, then you could get in trouble, okay? On Amazon. But if you buy a book that has a listing of brand new and then you sell it and then they ask you if you know if it's if you need if you have proof or whatever, then obviously you have proof because I'd have the invoice slash the online receipt 
so, literally saying that I sourced this exact book in this exact condition brand new, okay? So it really depends on that. The only time people run into trouble usually is if they try to source a used book and then list it as new. So don't do that. So let's check this next one to see if this is an opportunity. 3223. Let's X out of this person. They're clearly a sleazy seller. Um, this looks like the core edition. I'm not sure what that means, but is it so Prentice core edition? This is probably something I'd stay away from. I've never actually heard of core edition before. Is it let's try to find the back cover. So core edition. It doesn't say student edition. Pearson, and they probably cut off the right side right there to not show you that it's the student. Oh, here we go. Hold on. Nope, not the same one. So Core Edition. I wouldn't go after this one. I've actually never heard of Core Edition. That's a new one. Um, so avoid instructor editions, avoid um, international editions, and apparently avoid Core Editions as well. Unless this is a good one, somebody let me know in the comments. But I would just avoid that because there are going to be other product opportunities that you can buy. Okay. So this one probably isn't looking like a promising buy. Let's go through and try to find a different one. So. Let's scroll down. What's the biggest discrepancy now? It looks like it's the $60 one with the $17.66, although I've checked that one already. So let's go to the next page. Let's find a discrepancy right here. Here's a decent one. We have a 73 and a 21. It's green, so I haven't clicked it yet. So let's click that. We're also going to click this and go to the book finder. And then we want to find, okay, is there an opportunity to buy it used? Is there an opportunity to buy it new? So we're going to click right click here open that up in a new tab the cheapest option right here is about you know 22 bucks or so so the used buy box price is 36 but i'd be willing to bet that if you buy this 22 and you fulfill it for 36 there really isn't that much of a margin but let me show you to be sure so we'll go take the isbn if i can copy it <laughs> uh we're gonna try another product paste the isbn in there there it is and we'll estimate it's a pound we'll estimate it's like 10 9 and 1 that might not be right but you could obviously pick the other one as well but just you're just trying to get a good idea of what your your um your your fees are going to be okay right so what you what your fees are going to be shipping into fba what your fees are going to be weight wise to ship it so that's what all you're really doing there usually 99.9 .9 percent of the time that stuff's going to be there and obviously a book is never usually over like two pounds um, most of the time uh and your, your package dimensions are always going to be like 12 10 1 9 you know 10 9 1 etc it doesn't matter that much it's just giving you kind of a, a rough estimate we could even overestimate here and be like 12 10 1 and that might be relatively true or it might be an overestimate but regardless okay so now we have the the information in there let's find out if it's profitable so 36 bucks would be the price on both of these if I can type 36 bucks it costs us zero to ship it because we want to find out if, it, if it's a profitable merchant fulfilled before our shipping fee of media mail right it's gonna cost us a buck to ship it into FBA and if we buy it use the cheapest price is about uh, let's say let's round that up to 19 so 23 so 23 bucks and we're gonna calculate it so it is profitable with FBA and it is profitable with FBM right it was 36 bucks right yeah 36 bucks so I guess it is profitable actually it's a dot you can make a dollar 65 off of it although this isn't an ideal product I wouldn't want to spend 23 dollars to make a dollar 65 so while it is profitable it's probably a book I would avoid although if you did buy this merchant fulfilled or buy this 23 bucks and fulfill it merchant fulfilled you could also be profitable and because your your cost of this product I'd estimate to be like 260 or 250 or maybe something like three three bucks you'd still be profitable so it's a little bit better it's probably like a 20 to 25 percent roi because you're spending 23 bucks you'll probably make a good five bucks on this and then you know it's not a bad buy in that aspect so this is a good opportunity to buy this used and fill it as a merchant um it is an opportunity to fill it fba but i probably would avoid it so you can decide if you want to make five bucks on this book because your media mail obviously charges would be like 250 right so it's an opportunity to buy it used if you'd want to now let's check is it an opportunity to buy it uh, new so 73 bucks and the cheapest one right here is 62.42 so that's not a great opportunity to buy it new now another thing that I would like to say I'm gonna actually end this because it's pretty self-explanatory and I've done a million of these tutorials here I would go back and make this more specific but I promise you I promise you there are great opportunities to buy FBM books right now a lot of people are dropping the books are uh, dropping the prices excuse me and tanking prices and freaking out over this virus thing and just dropping their prices because they want to make sales right so and they just want to get rid of their inventory and recoup some of their money right so 
Another way that you can actually check is sometimes if you actually click, and this isn't actually going to be fed to you on the software, but sometimes if you're on the detail page already looking at a book and there's multiple new offers and you right click on the new offers, every once in a while you'll notice that sometimes there is a newer offer that's cheaper, right? So sometimes Amazon or somebody else will have the buy box as like a, a prime offer um, and then there might be like a, a newer offer that's cheaper, right? So let's say that Amazon had the buy box price at like at 73 bucks, right? But somebody had an FBM offer at like 34 or like 40 bucks. I have seen that before, okay? It doesn't happen that often, but it is there every once in a while. Obviously, the majority of the time, the other prices are going to be higher than the buy box, but that is not always the case, especially when you're dealing with FBM versus FBA sellers and books, right? So just check it. It's another opportunity. Click on the new, see if the buy box is selling for a higher price point than some of the other new offers. If it is, then check just like any other thing and any other sourcing technique if there's an opportunity to make a profit on that.